In the stunning and remote highlands of Scotland, expectant mums face all sorts of challenges. With such a remote area, how on earth am I getting an air ambulance in? With hospitals few and far between, the role of midwife here is key. She forms a close and unique bond with all her mums to be. I knew this one was going to cause me problems. Not causing problems, baby's absolutely fine. Sometimes by their side full term, all the way to delivery. It's a boy! It's a boy! Sometimes passing them onwards when things don't go to plan, where another friendly face will be waiting to help them through. Keep coming, keep it coming, keep it coming. Come on, I can nearly see this baby's head. Midwives think on their feet. I have my trumpet. Rise to some extraordinary challenges. Have you ever used gas in your no. door? No, okay. It definitely helps. It's hard work, but it's satisfying work. Oh, what do we have? <laughs> Morven is my knight in shining armor. They are the stars of the NHS. Very rewarding being part of this amazing experience that somebody's like. And for her, it's the best job in all the world. You're doing it. Oh! In 20 years in the job, it still amazes me every single day that I, I see a baby born. How are you today? Oh, you're just so gorgeous. She is the Highland Midwife. The mountains in the northeast of Scotland are surrounded by small coastal communities. The mums to be here in Tain have been served for the last 20 years by midwife Morvan. It's very rewarding seeing people grow from maybe not knowing anything about babies to then having their children and that developing into a family and know that you've had a bit of input into that role. So that's very rewarding being part of this amazing experience of somebody's life. Today, Morvan's visiting a mum who's expecting her second child. I'm off to see Carrie and she's now 32 weeks pregnant, almost. One of Carrie's fears is that the last time when she went into hospital, she was quite far on, and she wasn't really aware that she was having surges or contractions, so that was a bit of a surprise to her. Remember, when we got into the hospital, they were like, oh, we'll check how di much dilated you are, and they were thinking, oh, if you're just one to two centimetres, you'll have to go home, but when they checked me, she was like, oh, no, you're actually seven centimetres, so she's like, you're best to just stay in, so... I couldn't believe I was seven centimetres and didn't realise. Within hours, baby Georgie was born, but Morvan knows the panic of that night is very much in Carrie's mind just now. Most people do know when they're in labour. Most people get warning signs, but Carrie hasn't really felt that in the past. Very unusual not to feel anything and not be aware that you're having them. Hello. Hi, Dave. How are you today? Fine, how are you? Good, good, good. It's a nice day at the end. I know. With Carrie's history, Morvan is keeping a close eye on how her baby is growing. Do you feel your bump starting to grow? Yeah. 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 My husband thinks I was bigger. I'm bigger with this one than what I was uh -huh. with Georgie, but uh -huh. I don't know. I'm not so sure. All of a sudden got bigger or mm -hmm. just... Yeah. I'm measuring you down at 32. Yeah, up here today, Carrie. You would have expected it to sort of follow up the line here. Mm -hmm. But because it's plotting a bit higher, what we'll do is we'll send you off for a scan and just check the growth of the baby okay. if that's all right. Yeah, no bother. No charts being introduced and part of it is to try and reduce nationally the stillbirth rate. So it's checking that babies are growing and continuing to grow. It's measuring a bit bigger than it was the last time. So it's just really important to check that out, that the baby isn't growing too fast which could be a sign of diabetes, or just check there's not too much fluid around the baby as well. With Carrie afraid she won't realise her labour's started, Morvan's visits are vital to ensure baby's growth is on target and to know how long there is to go. Because I don't really feel contractions until they're too late, I'm worried that we're going to end up getting stuck having a baby in the car. <laughs> as NHS Highland covers such a vast area, the midwives often help each other out by covering one another's call-outs. Morvan's now en route to Sean, a first-time mum with very real health issues. She's had a few wee problems during her pregnancy that we've been watching closely. More and more people are, are becoming pregnant with medical conditions. In midwifery, we have two pathways. We've got green and red. Green is 
people who have no medical problem. So anyone who has any medical problem that's on medicine or requiring any treatment uh, usually goes on a RAID pathway. I have Graves' disease. Basically, my autoimmune system has attacked my thyroid. It affects the pregnancy with a higher risk of miscarriage, high risk of Down syndrome. I've had repeat thyroid tests. He's had repeat growth scans. It isn't just Sean who has health issues in the family. Partner Ben has major problems too. Her health's not as bad as mine. I had half my lung removed and a tumour two years ago, and since then I've had constant chest infections. I've been worried that anything happens to me, I'm not going to be around to support Sean and the baby or might even end up in hospital while she's in labour. With Sean on a red pathway, Morvan keeps a close eye on any physical changes. It's certainly a wee bit on the higher side today. Okay. There's nothing in your urine, so that's good. Because what we're looking at when your blood pressure's up is looking to see what's in your urine. Mm -hmm. If there's protein in your urine, that's a bit more worrying thing. If my blood pressure keeps climbing, how long would it sort of be, or what action would be taken if it stays, starts sort of going up still? If there was any concern with that, then we, the doctors would review and make a plan of what they were going to do, and ultimately it might mean that you might get induced a wee bit early. Morvan decides it's important to get Sean's blood pressure checked again at the health centre. Yeah, yeah, it's just her blood pressure's up a little bit than what it's been in the past. 10 o'clock on Thursday. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you very much. Any problems, give us a wee shout, well, OK? Thank you Thanks. so much, Morvan. Bye-bye. Bye. Most of my blood pressures have been good. They've been quite steady, which is obviously why my wife's now wanting a double check. It's not going to keep creeping up. I've been told his heart rate can go up. And if his heart rate does sort of start accelerating and staying up, then that is a sign that he's maybe got something due to my graves. If the midwives start worrying, that's when I start getting stressed. In the small village of Daviot, south of Inverness, 28-year-old Claire McIntosh is expecting her second baby. She's hoping it will be a completely different experience to that of her first child. Oh, yeah. That was good. But it might make the baby pop out. <laughs> Unfortunately, Rory um, was so comfy in his mummy's tummy that he was 15 days late in the end. <laughs> Him being born of in the hospital obviously was wonderful. But actually, everything was taken out of my control. I was induced. It was just the opposite of what I had wanted. Claire's midwife is Hazel. She's well aware that Rory's hospital birth in Ragmore in Inverness left Claire unhappy. She really wants to have her baby at home. It's much different than the hospital environment. She's inviting us into her home. The big thing for the women that you hear afterwards is, is that they felt so much more in control of their own birth. And Claire's husband, Gavin, feels exactly the same. I think it would be quite special to have the, one of the fourth generations of Martintosh born in the house itself. My grandfather, my father, myself and Rory. And Sorcia's coming along too, just to extend it, which is good. I can't wait for that. Getting this opportunity to have a home birth with my community midwife is just going to be amazing if it happens. Fingers crossed. Kim, do you want tea? Do you have a pot on? Well, I have the kettle half boiled. The kettle's on, of course. <laughs> I always do. So show on the right hand side, that's okay. Midwife Hazel's priority today is to check the baby is still on course for a home delivery. She's moving. I know. <laughs> it's like me bouncing on that ball. <laughs> <laughs> that's not <laughs> While she's here, Hazel also wants to ensure Claire is fully prepared for the risks involved with a home birth. It goes not just for you, but anybody that's having a home birth as well. You know, if there's any delay in progress, we don't have the luxury at home of sitting and waiting, waiting and seeing. Yeah. And so if there's, a, if there's any delay in that way, we're it, probably better, better heading on yeah. into Rig more. For reassurance, Hazel brings her delivery pack to show Claire how midwives prepare for a birth at home rather than at Ragmore Hospital. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff in here that hopefully we'll never need to use. Okay. And here we've got your delivery pack. 
ankle pad, and a pack of socks. <laughs> Gloves, <laughs> some aprons. Got your notes. We've got the blood bottles there because your Reese is negative. We've got to take blood from the cord and from you afterwards, and your Florence consent form. Okay. Yep. So that's all we need. Grand. The last home birth I was at, I didn't even open the delivery. Did you not? <laughs> no. <laughs> got about 20 towels perfect, perfect that are just ready for the bin and anyway is there a re oh yes there's the radiator, radiator. perfect yeah. to put the towels on put towels perfect on. i was watching one of the home births they had all these <laughs> it was like the olden days all these big pans of water on the boil <laughs> <laughs> do they not have a kettle <laughs> I know. Jeez, could you holiday. imagine me going on a bike from Inverness <laughs> down to you? <laughs> Here comes the midwife. So have you seen this Mexican belly shaking thing? No, I haven't seen it. <laughs> you have to get down on all fours. Your husband gets behind you and starts shuggling about the baby and the baby's meant to turn the right way and induce labour. <laughs> and it's supposed to make them come out, but... Yeah. No. 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 <laughs> No, I wouldn't be able to help you for laughing. <laughs> In the nicest part, I'm so looking forward for her to have her home birth because it's something that she wants. Right, Take coming. care. <laughs> I really hope it comes off her, and there's no reason why it shouldn't, you know. Back on the northeast coast, at the local health centre in Invergordon, Sean and partner Ben have come to meet their usual Highland midwife, Donna to follow up concerns about Sean's high blood pressure raised by midwife Morven. Three days to go. Can I do your blood pressure yeah, first? Sure. Mm -hmm. 128 over 80. That's about down to normal, is it? Mm -hmm. With blood pressure OK, Donna makes a routine check on the baby, only to discover there's a problem. He's been a bit quieter this morning. Oh, has he? Yeah. You? Okay. Can I just say that because you've had some reduced movements today, I would like to send you to Regmore Hospital okay. as well for a CTG, okay? Right. Which is a tracing of baby's heart rate. Fetal movements, baby's movements, are baby's way of sort of telling us that everything's okay. So, you know, if there's reduction or a change in pattern, it might suggest that further investigation is required just to make sure everything's okay. Get a wee chance to rest. Given she's already on a red pathway, the need for a CTG scan does worry Sean. But Donna's got some further news from the consultant in charge that she's hoping will keep her calm. We have received a letter this morning and the consultant um, in the letter has suggested that due to the Graves disease and everything else that's kind of been going on in the last few weeks that he'd be keen um, to offer you an induction of labour right. date. The plan is that they are going to induce you. Mm -hmm. Once they make that plan for the reasons that they're making yeah. it, they will um, commit to that. Yeah. You will not be sent home. So it's medical side rather than being overdue. That's right. So how is Sean feeling now? I'm absolutely fine about induction. Um, we at least know what's going to happen and how long they'll leave it before they'll obviously have to escalate anything. But he's hopefully on his way. I'm hoping that my body's actually pretty much prepared. Just needs a little push to get him here a bit earlier. With only a matter of weeks till her due date, Carrie is still working daily in her hairdressing business in Tain. So her midwife, Morvin's popped in for a trim and a chin wag. Is he busy today, Carrie? Yeah, it's, it's very busy today, but it's all spaced out. If you knew exactly when it was going to be, you could relax all the time, though, but... Morvin, the midwife, she comes in. It's good, though, because you can get any little questions you can get out of the way with her. Um, before having to go and book an appointment with her. I have been taking your advice and cutting down my hours, so I'm more in for just half days now. Sometimes I get a bit of back pain, but I don't know if that's a working. That's probably not the best job to be pregnant while doing here. I seem to be a lot more tired. Just when I come home, I'm a bit like, oh, exhausted. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Dave. How are you today? At a home visit later in the week, Morvan wants to check that Carrie's tiredness is purely down to work. 
Just my feet have been quite swollen, but that, I yeah. think that's just a standing <laughs> up. I'm putting that down to work too. Work and, gets the blame for it. And you have a perch chair at work? No. You no. should speak to your employer, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> Any headaches? Just an odd one or two. Just seems to be just along here. When you're at work, are you drinking enough, do you think? Probably not. No, I'm quite bad <laughs> for that. If you get a bit dehydrated, you get headaches as well, and it tends to be often sort of frontal headaches. Once you get home and you start drinking something, it tends to resolve. So yeah. maybe try drinking a wee bit more. But if you do start getting more headaches, you see have any flashing lights in front of your eyes, you need to get seen. OK. Right, and I'll just do your blood level if that's OK. Your haemoglobin and just okay. check it. The purpose of doing it just before you deliver is just check your iron levels good because if your iron levels are a bit low sometimes you feel really tired mm -hmm. uh, and not much energy. Yes, Georgie, she was sick when she seen me giving blood the oh, first time. Oh, was she? Oh, no, She was like, in the corner and I was like, you're not going to be a doctor, are you? She's like, no, she's like, I don't want babies either. While Carrie is being examined, her husband Kevin takes their daughter Georgie to the local beach. <laughs> He's not forgotten how that first birth turned into a surprising emergency, with Carrie unaware that she was actually in labour. I was up at six in the morning, then we were just jumping into the car, her waters went, then went up to the hospital. Uh, I think we were up there at about seven o'clock, and Georgie was out at one, so it was quite quick. Come here. Just don't like seeing someone Carrie in pain like that, and there's nothing you can do for her. So you just feel a bit helpless and a bit useless at that point. Kevin doesn't want history to repeat itself, especially as he works in the oil industry and can be suddenly called away. I could be anywhere, anywhere in the world, they could send, you just can't say no to the work up here. So it's good, it's good money, but it's long hours. You miss out on quite a lot of family time. Just because you were fairly quick the last time, you don't want to delay in trying to get hold of somebody that's before what, you yeah. head off. And he's working quite long hours just now, isn't he? Yeah. So he didn't, that's what I said, if he's not there, mum's going to have to be my birthing partner. So I've been telling her that ah, so <laughs> she's like, you need to know this as well. <laughs> yeah. But I've genuinely got it in my head that I'm going to go at like midnight and I'll be home by the nursery then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Having your midwife on the doorstep is a real bonus for Carrie. But for a mum-to-be, living in the Highlands can also create problems. They're nice ones, aren't they? It's a brilliant place to live here. It's just, it is a bit out of the way from things. So like the hospital being an hour's journey away, that can kind of be a bit of a nuisance, but then you've got all this here to make up for it. So it's not, it's not it has its, has its good points and its bad points living in such a place like this. Mum-to-be Claire lives near the mountains. She had her heart set on giving birth to her first baby in a birthing pool. Instead, she was induced in the hospital. She's determined this time will be different. This time we decided we wanted the birthing pool and the, the main way to definitely get one was to do it in our own home. Right, Rory, holes in. That's it. Now we'll fill the pool up with the water. But Claire is now five <laughs> days past her due date. So midwife Hazel is coming out to try to encourage labour to start. We are going out to do what's called a cervical, a cervical sweep. Claire's keen to have her baby now. This might just give that little bit of a helping hand for her. There's no cows in that one today. I did have three sweeps with Rory and none of them were successful, so I'll not have my fingers crossed. Oh, more bits, more bits. More bits, more bits and pieces. I've got the... You don't need a Peugeot, you need a lorry or something. Yeah, placenta bucket. Oh, lovely. In order for you to go in labour, the cervix has to undergo changes. So what it's got to do in order to go into labour is to move forward and it softens okay. and it comes up and dilates. So we'll look and see what, what stage, what stage your, your cervix is at. Okay. I'll sweep the sack of 
waters okay. from the top of the cervix, the membranes, you know, and what that can do is give you just a wee boost of natural prostaglandins. And we need these prostaglandins to ripen your, what we call ripen your cervix, <laughs> makes you sound like an apple. <laughs> You can do a cervical sweep on one lady and you can walk away and think, you know, okay. then another lady, you could go, oh, yeah. things could be happening. On the way to the bedroom, midwife Hazel takes the opportunity to pass on another tip to bring on labour. When you're walking upstairs, go sideways. Sideways, I have been doing that. And what that does is, is it mm -hmm. moves and go down sideways the pelvis. So it's the opposite. Yeah. It feels funny, but yeah. Yeah, and yeah. that's it. Right now, that's her head. It's quite low there. Oh, that's good. Okay, now I'm just going to go and do the sweep now. Okay. okay. There we go. Hopefully that wasn't too bad. No, and what I'm at this moment in time. Your cervix is still quite still posterior. Up. It's still quite long. Okay. And it's starting to soften. Good thing is, is her head is quite low and it's well applied to the cervix. So keeping in that upright okay. position, position, sitting on your ball, lying on your left hand side, that is all going to keep that pressure on the cervix and that in itself Self will help, will help th move things along. Take care, Claire, and I'll hopefully see you over the weekend. As Hazel leaves, she can sense Claire seems a bit discouraged. The news that I had to give her was a bit disappointing, that her cervix wasn't as favourable as she hoped it would be. But the onset of labour is, um, is unpredictable, so I, I'm very, very optimistic that we will get this call, we'll go out and she'll get her home birth. But the question is, is Claire sure? Back at the health centre in Tain, Carrie's almost at her due date. She didn't notice the contractions with her first baby, so this time, Morvan and she are taking no chances. But how often do they come? Since this last three while, they've been quite a lot. thing is, for you now, you think you're overdue. I know, <laughs> I know. You see with this one, I'm just like, right, I'm ready for you to come out now. Mm -hmm. Because I kind of thought I was going to go early. Yeah. If I reach my due date, I'll be raging. <laughs> oh, yeah. The thing is, in theory, you're still early for us. Yeah. So if you, if you are niggling that often, then you need to go up. Oh, no, don't do this to me, Morvan. <laughs> oh, no. Hi there, it's Morvan, uh, midwife through in teen. Concerned, Morvan decides to consult with the midwives at the hospital in Inverness and get their opinion. So she's contracting every two to three minutes at the moment, they're lasting about a minute. But she doesn't really feel her, her contractions and she only sort of feels them when she puts her hand in her tummy. Uh, so last time she didn't really know she was in labour and then her waters went and she was seven centimetres. Thanks, bye, bye. They said to come in and they'll examine you and see what's happening. Oh, OK. Our contractions, our surges are coming a bit more closer. They're lasting about a minute and they're coming every two or three minutes, so you can't sort of say that's nothing just now. Really so dead. we've sent them up to the hospital. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> Midwife Hazel's cervical sweep on Claire seems to have done the trick. Claire's dream to have her baby in the birthing pool at home in her kitchen looks as if it will be realised. It's getting a bit rough. Yeah, that's so that one. Yeah. We are getting a bit She's progressing really well. The contractions are getting a lot more frequent and stronger. Well, I'll wait events. We've been there in the pool for two hours. Two and a half hours now. But a lot happier home when the child's born at home, I would say. And that's a good story to tell. Oh no! Well done, Claire. Oh! 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 I think I want gas and air now. Claire, I'm sorry. 
sorry, sweetheart. Well done. Well done. Oh, I can... Oh, my head's coming right down now. Oh! oh so well done. Well done, Claire. You're doing it. Oh! Although the labour is progressing, it's painful and very slow. Hazel is worried now about Claire's strength and whether it's wise to continue giving birth at home. Oh. Gosh, you're getting tired. I'm tired. Anymore. These contractions, they're too short, they're not lasting long enough. Is, is this because your room's getting tired? What do you want to do, Claire? I don't mind, just whatever you think, Hazel. If you think it's best to head in, just you decide. I'd rather it was over sooner rather than later. Okay, should we make the decision to transfer in? Okay. I'll go on the phone. We're transferring in the home birth. Lady in labour with slow progress and I need to transfer her into Ragmore Hospital as soon as possible, please. At their last meeting in the health centre, midwife Donna advised first-time mum Sean that because of her medical problems, for safety, she should be induced in hospital. The plan is that they are going to induce you. Okay. You will not be sent home. So this is medical side rather than being overdue. That's right. Partner Ben is driving them now to Ragmore Hospital in Inverness. Uh, come on, I'm a nice short stay. <laughs> It isn't a short stay. That's come on. It's now 30 hours since Sean was induced. Right, Sean, take a big breath in for me. Hospital midwife Lynn thinks it's time for direct action and decides to break Sean's waters. How do you yeah. actually break the waters? What we do is, it's like an examination, so I pop my, my fingers just inside and I find the cervix. Yeah. And all we do is we have like, it's like a large crochet hook there, yeah. and I just basically put a wee bit of pressure on the membranes and just make a little hole in them. Anytime you want me to stop, you just let me know, okay? Big, big breaths of that gas. That's it, that's the water's coming, so just big sucks of that gas. Or what we, for protocol here, it's half a centimetre an hour that yeah. we would sort of expect you to dilate, so you can sort of work that one yeah. out for yourself. So, yeah, so you may be here for a while. With the drip, we would be looking for her to be contracting about four and ten minutes, and they're moderate, so they're lasting about a minute at the moment. But breaking Sean's waters doesn't have the speedy effect midwife Lynn hopes for, and the risk to mum and baby is increasing. We had a quite a dip in the heart rate. We popped a wee clip on just so we could yeah. monitor baby a bit closer. We might need to start pushing if baby's heart rate. Yeah, drops um, too much. It's not satisfactory. We obviously can't let baby continue with these big dips in the heart rate because that's going to reduce the amount of oxygen that's that baby's getting. Back in Tain. Carrie comes to see Morvan yet again because the hospital in Inverness decided her labour hadn't started. Oh, we're frustrated, don't we, Pet? <laughs> I can't believe you're still here. <laughs> there was one night I was kind of sitting there and I was like, oh, I can feel it. And it was kind of every 15 minutes and I was like, oh, this is it. And then it just stopped after an hour. And I was like, oh, so frustrated. <laughs> I was so convinced that was it coming. <laughs> I know, look at Mammy's big belly. Oh, it's like, how much longer can it be like this? <laughs> well, it's quite happy in there, guys. <laughs> I don't nice. want it to be happy yeah, in there. I want it to there. come out. <laughs> Most people go over their due date. So often we say to them, don't even think of your due date. It's your due date, but think of 12 days over. Like, but you just don't know. If we knew that, we'd be quite rich. <laughs> <laughs> For Carrie, she had her baby a bit early last time, so she spent a long time expecting this baby to appear and it's not appeared yet, so that probably increases her anxiety. She's actually due tomorrow.
It's now five hours since Sean's waters were broken. Partner Ben has been with her all the way. She's gone as far as she can with her. We got to finish. I can feel cervix all the way around, just a tiny bit, so you're nine centimetres, Sean. Hospital midwife Lynn now has serious concerns about Sean's baby. Just because we're getting some little dips in baby's heart rate, OK? Mm -hmm. So we're okay. going to get you pushing with these contractions. Chin down on your chest and give us a big push into your bottom. Oh. Just down like Come on, right down, right up now, right down. Keep going, keep going. Come on, a bit more. Right, come on to this side towards me a wee bit. Right, this next contraction, oh. I want this leg up. You feeling that pressure? Yep, come on then, right down into your bottom. Keep it coming, keep it coming. Come on, I can nearly see this baby's head. Come on, and again, and again. He's not <laughs> far away at all. Just right there. But despite there. the efforts of the midwives, Sean's baby is still not being delivered. Sean, come on, keep it coming, keep it coming, keep it coming. The midwife calls a doctor for help. Yeah, I've been just told that uh, the trace of the babies uh, is, is quite abnormal. That means the uh, heart rate has gone down and they're quite worried that the baby is doing poorly there. So I have to go in and assess whether I can deliver the baby in the room or I, should I be taking it to the theatre. Come on, you're nearly there. Got a really big one like that again. Keep it coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. And again. I'm enjoying my best. You're doing really well. Come on, and one more like that. Keep coming, keep it coming, keep it coming, keep it coming. Good for you. And I'll give, just give a big push now. That's it. You're getting it on. <laughs> no, just blow, 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 just blow. Blow. This is it. That's it, baby's coming. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Here comes your baby. Slow this. Hi, baby. Congratulations. Hi. So happy. Yeah, I knew you were going to be a crier. Just a There he goes. Hello. Welcome to the world. There's your wee boy. And it's definitely a boy, yep. Yeah. Definitely a boy. Hey, I should start with you. Nathan Donald Goss. Certainly let us, letting us know that he's here. After all the drama, Sean's baby boy is born in fine health and with a good pair of lungs. I couldn't push him out. They got the doctor to come in to deliver him because I couldn't push him. And with his heart rate dropping, it wasn't safe leaving him in. But he's absolutely gorgeous. I'm delighted he's here. Just knackered. Chris, such He's going to be huge on him. Yeah, just slightly. <laughs> Carrie and her husband Kevin are driving back to the hospital in Inverness. She's still feeling no contractions. 16 days now I've been sitting, so it's just, I think everyone kind of thought the baby would have been out by now. I'm hoping and they might be thinking this baby's a bit too big anyway, that they might do something to encourage labour to come. Just get my hands on another wee wash, OK? The hospital midwife decides to break Carrie's waters. We'll go ahead and do this procedure. All right, we're ready. Yeah. OK, just relax into the bed, good girl. So that's then broken? So that's then broken. Yeah, we'll just see if this starts to happen. <laughs> But even with her waters broken, Carrie is still not feeling her contractions. You started contracting the minute we brought your water, so... You're definitely not feeling that. No. Not feeling a thing. Mm -hmm. Or you do get these people that just don't feel pain. I can feel it when I laugh, definitely. Does that mean they're getting stronger than the I think they are, yeah. I think I feel that. Yeah. Oh, these contractions are really picking up now. She's having five contractions in ten minutes. Might well be the next shift that will get this baby, I think. Fab. It's early morning in her Highland community of Daviot, and mum-to-be Claire's dream of giving birth in her home is judged too dangerous by her midwife, Hazel. She wants her to go immediately to hospital in Inverness. We 
have had to transfer Claire in because there was slow progress and we actually think the baby's in a back-to-back -back position. So our contractions were very incoordinate. That can lead to uh, all sorts of trouble if we were at home. So I think the safest decision was the transfer in. Hazel accompanies her to pass Claire on to the hospital midwives. I've handed over to the labour ward staff because she's changed from that green pathway into a red pathway during labour. So she'll be consultant-led care. And it quickly becomes apparent that Claire's birth is not straightforward. Got some help. She's a big baby, so what happens is when the head is out, the shoulders knock against the pubic bone and it's bone against bone. So you're not going to get anywhere if you're going to keep pulling, it just won't. We just put her flat out and push the legs back. It just gives that wee bit more space for the shoulders to come under the pubic bone and it can be instant. And it really is instant. Little Sorsha has finally made it into the world. Claire's hopes of a home birth have been dashed, but the midwives ensure the safety of her and her daughter. Oh, I was a bit upset coming to hospital this morning because it's not obviously what I wanted, but I've had the best of both. I was just so glad to get that night of using the pool and being at home, and um, oh, it, was, it was a good outcome, wasn't it? Glad we've done it, so we've done it again. And in a week, it'll just be like, we've always had you. No. Oh, I know. Right. <laughs> this is an exciting day for midwife Donna. She's going to meet Mum Shan's baby for the very first time. I haven't seen them since Nathan's been born. I'm really looking forward to catching up with them and see how things are today. Because we do do specific things out in the community, it's important that we catch up with them. Hello. Hello, how are you? I'm okay, thank you. You do well. Oh, yes. I'm dying to hear all about it. His heart rate started dropping. He went from 150 to 88 pulse wise. They had a paediatric doctor in, in case he wasn't breathing and they, put, they literally took him out and oh my God, the scream on you. This is where you're not going to like it. Don't you start spitting out milk now. How I spent my first few hours cuddling with mum and dad, skin to skin, bonding. Yay! The sleepers nights aren't good. <laughs> See that? <laughs> Got a family now. Hello. Handsome boy. She doesn't stress or anything which is what you need with a midwife, especially when you're obviously going through a first pregnancy. A little smile there, yeah. I kind of have to point all the little smiles. Oh, I know, <laughs> these little smiles coming, aren't they? <laughs> the worst kind of job when you want to have a child. No, the best. So you get, oh, you just, <laughs> like, it's like a fix. <laughs> you get to share all the experiences through you guys. And then you get to see the babies afterwards. It he is a wonderful thing to be part of, isn't it? In hospital in Inverness, <coughs> mum-to-be Carrie, who up to now has felt no contractions, is very definitely feeling contractions. Going. Midwife Kirsten is there to help. When the next one comes, you really have to go with it, Carrie, because baby, just because he's sitting there now, his head's getting quite squished, so his heart beats dipping down quite a bit. Mm. When the next one comes, just don't be frightened of that feeling, just go with mm. it. Right, so you're giving another push if you can. Very hard push. Ah! Oops, I could see the top of your baby's head with that last one. It is a baby coming. Fantastic, there he's coming. Oh, well, we'll find out in the next one if you've got a boy or a girl. Here's baby. Can you see who you've got there, 
there, Kevin? And the first visitor to baby Carly is her big sister Georgie. It's your little sister. Are you happy? You got a little sister. Let me get a thought. Oh, you street. got it properly yourself. Oh, Georgie, that's a beautiful one. This is the day midwife Hazel gets to finally see Claire's new baby. You've seen them throughout all this journey and you get this sense of satisfaction that that's it, my job is done. <laughs> so far, she's definitely a mama's girl. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Look at the cuddle. Just have a wee look at this card. Yes. There's a jingle bell. Here. That's your uh. mum throwing toys at you now. <laughs> yes. Hey, beautiful. <laughs> Bless you. One's a wish. What do you wish for? Mum Claire knows that midwife Hazel's decision to move her from the home birth she wanted to a hospital birth for her own and the baby's safety was vital. You have to trust their judgement and she made a call and it was obviously the right call for what was to come. Hazel's just been great start to finish and I've been super lucky to have her as my midwife. Sad to see her go now, actually, now I've been discharged. Aww. Just to say thanks, I don't you know how you want to carry that. You shouldn't have. That's OK. Or better be careful. I know, that's not me. Thank you so no, much. No, it's OK, thanks it's for everything. It's been an absolute pleasure, but no, thank you. You form an attachment, you don't forget these women, you know, and uh, it'll be great in years to come to bump into them in Tesco's and, and see Sorsha creating merry hell. Uh. Oh. Midwife Morvan had planned to be at the hospital for Carrie's birth, but the hospital had to act swiftly when her baby finally and very quickly appeared. A bit gutted, obviously, that I wasn't there to do the delivery like we'd been hoping for, but she got a G, so therefore she's looked after by the hospital staff. So I'll just be interested to see, hear her story and, and see your little girl. I can't wait. Hello. Hi there. Congratulations. Thank you. How are you? Hi. Good. I was getting all the contractions but not feeling them till about three o'clock and then I was like, oh, I just felt sitting and I actually get, started getting really excited. And she came out at, at 6.33, yeah. she came out. Six centimetres on, it tends to go quicker as well, but you have to guarantee. Before the birth and me not feeling the contractions, we kind of thought <laughs> she was going to end up arriving in the back of the car, they're sitting, but no, she hanged on for as long as possible. You were quite quick, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. If I didn't have... Marvin, if I didn't have someone I could talk to like that, I, I think I've just been a nervous wreck the whole way throughout the pregnancy. When you see her here, she's got lovely head. Yeah, she's got a good bit at the back too. You can kind of hear it in your head when you're going through it, like, oh, I've got to breathe, I've got to do this, I'm doing this, Marvin told me this, Marvin told me that. So it was, it, it did make such a difference with her. Even though she wasn't there, she kind of still helped out a lot. Can you give me two teas? We'll be back and see you on Thursday. That's perfect. You'll meet other people that's had kids and they'll yeah. be like, oh, who was your midwife? And you'll say, oh, Marvin. They're like, oh, yeah, she was mine. I think up here makes such a difference because they do form that bond with and they do get to know you and everyone kind of knows them as well. My goodness, this is the best job ever. You're seeing, you know, women change into mothers and it's just nice to be part of that journey and the opposite of care. It's just lovely. And just being out in the lovely countryside while you're doing it is fantastic.